grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen your life now and forever. Amen. So it's good to be with you on this fourth Sunday in Epiphany. Epiphany is this season where we start off the calendar year with the joy of God's love being made real, made apparent, made obvious. And so the first week of Epiphany has to do with God's love through the a beautiful star that led the wise men to the birth of, and celebrate the birth of Christ. Second week, we talk about baptism, and baptism is the epiphany where you get to see through God's word and God's action, a saving action. And then we talk about personal testimony, that when you share your heart and your love for Jesus, that can be an epiphany for someone else to see your confidence in the Lord. And this week, I want to speak about God's blessings in your life. But let me just emphasize what I was trying to teach the kids. I, I always struggled with the word, and let me go a little bit more detail through the Matthew words, you know, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn. And I've often heard that translated into happy. Have you ever heard that? Happy are those? And I don't know what it really, how that meant. And I think it's a nice try. I think it shows more about our culture, that we want happiness as a primary value. But if you go to the root of the word, makarios in the Greek, it has to do with being uh, enlarged and extended. And so I'm going to basically say the word stretched. God stretches by giving you graceful uh, episodes, people, experiences in your life in which you are enlarged for the kingdom of God. In the Old Testament, the word, which took on some symbolism for us with our uh, president who just is now um, out of office, President Barack. Barack means blessing. That's the Old Testament word for it. And Barack means to be humble. It means to be on your knees. So I was going to tease you. If you ever pray for a prayer of blessing, you're just praying to be stretched and humbled. Anybody want more of that? Right? But that's how the kingdom of God is expanded. And so I wanted to kind of use a couple of illustrations from the scripture. The first one is in the Micah reading to uh, what does the Lord require of us to, to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with God is a beautiful summary of what it is to be a person of faith. But I wanted to go back. Now, I've been encouraging you to bring your Bibles. I'm encouraging you to read your Bibles. I'm encouraging you to have family devotions around the Bible. I'm encouraging you to do that so that you learn the faith stories in which we rely upon. And it strengthens your life. It's an encouragement to you. Maybe I'm asking you to stretch, but the reason I'm asking is when you know the faith stories of our uh, faith forefathers and mothers, it is a, it's a wonderful time of celebration. So King Balak of Moab was trying to get this prophet, uh, Balaam, to basically curse Israel. And the, the prophet said, I will only do what the Lord said. And the Lord kept on giving this uh, again and again a blessing for Israel. And when the uh, at uh, Shittim and Gilgal, these two places were... Uh, uh, Gideon had a great military victory, even though he was a reluctant leader at uh, Sittim, and at Gilgal is when they crossed over into the Promised Land. They built this rock monument to uh, proclaim the love of God, that God fulfilled the promises. And if you don't know the past, um, I've heard different phrases of that, but if you don't know your past, it's difficult to celebrate the current. And so what I'm going to say to you is very simple. 75th anniversary coming up. I came here six years ago, and I go, 75th anniversary coming up. I'm just saying it to you. It's coming up. It's June 2019. That's not very far, is it? And so, uh, with Steve as our new president coming in, I know that he'll uh, help, and we'll, there'll be a movement here of clarity about understanding and celebrating all of God's blessings in our past. And I don't just mean happy talk. I'd love for a congregation to actually be really authentic about the highs and lows of life together. Not just happy, it all was great. There's been some tough times for this congregation to be stretched high, low, a uh, beautiful faith story of God's covenantal blessing, isn't there? And so let's put it together in word. I'd love there, there be, to be song. And as we celebrate our 75th anniversary, I just lifted to you. I think we should raise $75,000 for the food pantry. Wouldn't that be a great blessing to this community in which we've taken that stand? And heck, while we're at it, let's pay off the debt and free up $27,000 a year for more ministry. Wouldn't that be great? It's around 200000 bucks. We can do that when we are focused upon God's blessings and stretching for our life. And the New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians, I wanted to say that there's a phrase in there that just hits me. I don't know. Is anybody under stress? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are very nice to me, 
most of you don't really come to me talking about how you're stressed. I mean, there's pastoral care type things, but let's just say that there's things going on in the church that are stressing you out. You're so polite. You never say it to me. You just say it to Judy or somebody else. <laughs> and then, you know, kind of gets filtered back to me. I just encourage you. I mean, I am very sensitive. <laughs> very tender, like a tender rose. But I can take it, right? We're all, just, just let me know what's going on. Okay, and I just encourage you to do that. It, I, I sense the congregation is under stress because we're trying to align to a new plan and we're not really sure where we're going yet because it's new. And we haven't done it. As I best understand, we've done beautiful projects, but we've never done a plan trying to understand. And so we've got enough work for the next 20 years to, be, to bring God's love, hope, and healing to the world. But whatever happens in the future, if we stay on track, what it says in 1 Corinthians, for Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. I just love that phrase. It is such a simple answer to whatever we do is to this love of Jesus Christ. It's in the beautiful picture. It's in the beautiful cross we have in our midst. If we stay focused upon that, um, whatever God stretches us to be, it will be amazing. And so I ask you to do that. Now speaking of the stress, I don't know if you noticed, as your pastor, that I was in pain the last couple months. Have you noticed that? With my knee, my ankle, and then I didn't know it's related to the hip. Did you know that? And all that's related to your brain. And so uh, I've been in some pain. And so I'm on a new medication. I still got to get things in balance. There may be surgery in the future. There's a lot of things. I need to get weight to the level that it's better for my ligaments and bones. But Dr. Sumney gave me this really great pill. And I think it's equivalent to 17 ibuprofen, just one pill. Debbie has asked me to take this pill the rest of my life. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit happier, aren't I? Well, I'm not clean, right? And I still got to get it together. Uh, dear Barbara Babbitt, you know Barbara? So she goes, yeah, you've been in real pain the last couple months. That, that was her comment to me. Uh, her encouragement has a unique style to it. Um, but I said, really? She goes, oh yeah, you know, and I started thinking about that. And when you're in pain, whether it's psychic pain or physical pain or any pain that you are, and there's some members of our congregation, if not all of us, weren't some element of pain from what I can tell. Maybe it's fear of the plan, fear of the future, confusion, whatever it is, life, there's, there's plenty going on in life, is I'm asking us to set that aside. And today, today, claim that we're going to be encouraging people. I'm not pointing anybody out. It's all of us. It's all of us. The habit I have with the pills, I can't develop that in the habit, but I can develop a habit of encouragement. So if you aren't bringing God's love, hope, and healing to the world through words of encouragement to yourself or to others, then I ask you to think about it and at the least be quiet. And to encourage, prayerfully encourage. This is what we're about. And I... So back in the old days, they had stones. I'm just saying in uh, this videotape that's going in historical records that today marks the day of encouragement. Are you with me? We are going to be people of encouragement to each other. And every, every life here is important, but it's going to stretch us. So if we pray for God's blessings, all I know is that means God's grace will stretch us in ways that are uncomfortable because that's what stretching about. We have to discern how we're going to move forward. We don't quite know all those things. We don't know, but we have to stay on track with that and to continue. So I wanted to uh, set up another dynamic of encouragement for our leaders. Um, when I first came here, I teased Greg Olson, who was the president of the council at that time, which was, would you please tell me where the front door is? Because I'd never been a pastor before. I'd hung around churches a lot, but that was unique. And with Daryl's help and others, they helped me get acclimated to being a pastor. And so I thank for his, you know Greg, right? very gentle and very good approach. Uh, that's what I needed at the beginning. But probably I moved a little too slow because Greg was so nice. And so then God sent me, Jeff. <laughs> Where are you, Jeff? There you are, in the back, okay. Um, we've become friends in Christ over this. But Jeff has this unique ability as the president of uh, the church council. Is He's very accurate in his diagnosis because he does that for a living. But the problem you have when somebody's accurate is it can make you kind of uptight. 
right? Because he can say things. And so Jeff has been a leader that has looked at basically and dedicated his life to faith formation, but basically said, if we keep doing the things the way we're doing it, in 30 years there won't be a church here. Right? And so he's been sent to encourage us to think strategically, or I'll say, to stretch us. And then when Karen has been a church council president with her wonderful style, which I combines a love for children and education and a real gift for music and poetry and words and poems and art, you know, this, uh, this beauty that she's brought forward has sometimes been misunderstood because that's a little bit different than a project. This is, a, you're, you're casting a vision for a, a plan that is not so tactical but deeply spiritual, deeply moving, and we're not yet all one mind. And so I'm so thankful that you helped through your gifts to do that. And then, good Lord, now we have Steve. <laughs> I thought I'd get a bigger laugh, Steve. Sorry. I'm working here. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys know Steve. Steve's a, a programmer. He likes to get things done. Right? He, it, I think that's helpful in the programming world, right? To get things done, to, to code, and to make things happen. And so... Uh, he has complained to me and many times that he is not qualified for this, he's not interested in this, he doesn't want to do it as president of the church council. And so guess what, as a pastor, I get to say, that sounds a lot like Moses. <laughs> that sounds a lot like people in the Bible, right? That's a call from God. Because if it wasn't, I mean, if you could do all this slip, then that'd be different. We'd probably be concerned. But you need people's encouragement on how to make things real. We need to encourage our leaders. So... Is that enough on that? Whoever is leading, whoever is here in any role, I ask you to be people of encouragement. And yes, we are being stretched, but my goodness gracious, if you don't understand, God is blessing us. God is stretching us to ways that we don't even understand. How to engage deeper with our families. How to engage deeper with our community. How to engage deeper with the love throughout this world. How to stretch by the grace of God. And so, more joy in this uh, congregation, I'd say it this way, more joy is when we accept this graceful stretching and we see in through the light and, and love the lens of Jesus Christ We proclaim that power and that wisdom. And so I ask you to join me today. Are, are we to be people of encouragement? And the answer is yes, with the help of God. All right? So I'm going to do it one more time. Are we going to be people of encouragement? Yes, with the help of God. Amen. Amen.